ಸವಿತುರ್ಹರಿಣ್ಯಂ ಭರಗೋ ದೇವಸ್ಯೀಮಹಿ ದಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾಂಧಂ ಸರಾಮ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅವ ಬಿಲೌಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಸತಿ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ಎಂಡ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎಂ oneness of all religions is uh, one of the very important aspect if not foundation of his message his philosophy his vision actually um, uh, all religions they came from one of the same source that's lord god and such as i is incarnation of that lord god sometimes it's very difficult i don't know how about you but it's very difficult for me as a human being even well to understand that this eternal absolute consciousness can be born or actually actually was born in a human form and how can we understand how can i understand okay that i spent really time something like 20 years in his ashram i mean in a physical presence of god this huge experience very difficult to understand it and this very god he told us that all religions we have one and only source that's god so very logical god is studying us okay all religions are true and they came from the same source but we as a human beings with our um, ambitions ego mind tricks we mix everything and then you know <clears throat> we start to divide this is my something here yeah. that's mine that's yours mine is better or only the truth so that's mind ego ignorance so and um, it's obvious that when we practice any religion the end will be the same salvation enlightenment oneness bliss self realization god realization whatever you wish to call it that's very interesting phenomenon that you know actually such a sai never even try to create his own new global religion so let us think about it with his power with his wisdom with his energy shakti power I think it was easily possible to create some like something like new global religion and um, some side devotees even asked why not that's good good idea we have god let's create new <clears throat> new global religion but at the same time let's be clear swami never did it why actually what was his vision at least as i can understand because nobody knows what is the vision of swami but everyone may express his or her opinion about this vision of philosophy or message so different religions created by god and they exist mostly for thousands of years some of them of course hundreds of years and they are unique they <coughs> they are wonderful they are different and sometimes people uh, say that okay they are different it's not good no 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 they are different and that's brilliant because they different because well god created all that religions through different prophets different avatars 
different global uh, masters and it's happened in a different eras time well in a different cultural environment for different ethnic cultures the difference between Bible and um, okay Veda Bhagavatam Ramayana the difference is also cultural and that's wonderful it's you know that's wonderful it's not the problem it's beauty when you read all that pages of the Bible about Abraham and Moses something like 10 15 some people even think 20 centuries BC or oh, at least okay approximately 15 okay actually anyway nobody knows and then you take Jesus teaching that's okay first 80 the difference is time though it is more or less the same part of the world but the culture was different you know Abraham time and Jesus time so that's difference just imagine okay Krishna we don't know exactly but we suppose something like 3000 years BC and then Buddha just five or six centuries BC different cultural you know situation environment reality but at the same time the same India well we have uh, so many different traditions in Hinduism just okay bhakti jnana yoga raja yoga tantra yoga we have shaiva tradition vishnu tradition shakti tradition why not to mix them we don't need because they're different and that's wonderful it's like we take christian religion we have orthodox church catholic church protestant church they're all different with the different approaches to the bible with a different spirituality with a different philosophy theology that's wonderful we don't need to mix it artificially as one and only okay religious tradition but the message of Swami was that yeah different religions they exist for ages and they they going to exist no nobody is saying that we have to change or destroy them but we have to respect each other and we have to be open to the different streams of information for example this lifetime i am christian i believe in my past time i was whatever hindu jewish muslim buddhist but this lifetime i am christian and actually when i came to swami for the first time that was beginning of 90s uh, you know very end of more or less end of 20th century and I was not really involved in all that Christian kind of things. I was interesting, interested in yoga. You know, Lord Shiva was my dream. Okay, Lord Shiva is my dream even now. But I became much more Christian after years in Puttaparthi because Swami's message was okay. If wisdom of the Lord was to put okay my soul into certain culture family it means i have to experience this religion but at the same time i can say that i'm kind of expert in vedic and buddhist scriptures and i'm practicing a lot of mantras different types of meditations so i'm very much open and for me it's not a contradiction it's not a problem because sometimes people think that okay if um, we belong to this religion, to this church, or maybe to this ashram. We are like chosen separate group of people, and that that people next door church, next door ashram, they are not good. But this is like one family. We can have different color 
of skin. We can have different cultures, but we're one family. That was his teaching. So it means it's not about like, you know, destroying all religions and artificially to create one and global religion. That's not about this. Because we have many different philosophies and that's, that's, that's the beauty of our culture. And um, that's the question about respect to each other and possible synthesis. The possible practice of many religious traditions simultaneously, that's also a possibility. Of course, some people can't understand how it's possible, but okay, I'm practicing Christian, Hindu, Buddhist religion easily together. What is the problem? I can't see any contradiction between message of Krishna, Buddha and Jesus. That's my reality. That's that's reality of my consciousness. And of course, I respect all other realities. So let me share with, with some very short, simple and beautiful story. It's happened middle of 90s in Put Party. I was just walking out of the ashram outside and uh, so I met uh, like you know few uh, Christian nuns uh, Catholic Catholic nuns with a you know cr huge number of children with a certain okay uniform it was obvious that maybe 10 nuns with a you know, couple of hundreds of children from certain Christian college and at that moment they just I was just going out and they in main gate of the ashram. And I was so surprised because, okay, let's not to forget that um, such as a ashram, Hindu ashram after all. Yeah? And I just tried to communicate with some of that nuns, um, Christian nuns, and uh, I asked them very strange question, oh, come on, uh, are you Christian? Obviously, yes, yeah. Uh, they told, yes, we are from just some monastery from South India, from Tamil Nadu, as far as I remember, Christian monastery, and these uh, children from the school, which is next to the monastery, Christian monastery, Catholic uh, church monastery. And my next question was, maybe strange, childish, when I asked them, okay, but if you are Christian nuns, how, how come that you are uh, came and brought all the children to the, well, Swami, who is like you know, a Hindu ashram with a uh, practice of uh, whatever, pujas, etc. Et and they told me uh, an obvious thing, and I was very happy to listen to that, uh, and they told me that, okay, Lord God is one, and for us, uh, Satisa is a great saint, a great sage. Of course, for that Christian nuns, Swami was not God, but he was great saint and great sage. Basically, that's enough, actually. And they told me that, yeah, we came here with all that children because we wish to receive his blessings. <laughs> Very simple, beautiful. Um... You know that's that's very important, and uh, that Christian nuns whom I met in like middle of nineties in put party, they were Christians nuns practicing Christian religion, studying Christian Bible. But it was not a problem for them to come to put party for the blessings. You know that's beauty. That's beauty of Swami's vibration because he attracted, and even keep on attracting even right now. People from all corners of the world, with them, you know, with their own religion, their own culture, and we feel as the family, as the family, Sai family. That's wonderful. Let us support this uh, this important message. Let us stay as family, because now we see division. You know, like administration of the ashram is separate from such a side organization. Very sad. Not good. 
ego trick. That's the reason. Now, put party people, they separate, and you know, we have Mudanahali project, which is separate, not only on the level of India, but globally. Very bad, very sad. And that's each of us is responsible for that because do not say that okay I'm, I'm very small and I, I can't influence no 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 each and every of you we are all responsible and if we just each of us will start to to do something like you know to make small steps to bring back this oneness which are which we um, losing it's not good what I'm saying now. Sad, sad news, you know, sad message. We are losing this oneness of Sai family because of all that divisions, different administrators, different leaders. They are responsible for all this. But we, we are the people, we are the Sai devotees. Also, we have power not to follow this struggle many divisions unfortunately m many more divisions may come may happen in the future when we have to stay as in oneness as a family god bless all of us sairam see you next time Suhan Tatsavitur Varinyam Bharago Devasya Nimahi Diyo Yonak Prachodayantam